Stanford University. Source of all life, eternal spirit of beauty and of truth. At this time of new beginnings, we ask blessings upon each transfer student and each member of the Stanford class of 2015, and upon all those who have been and will be part of their lives. May they, in a poet's words, drink life to the lees. May they come to know cities and manners, climates, councils, governments, and themselves, not least, but honored of them all. May we have sufficient inspiration to launch forth courageously into realms now unknown, exploring, inquiring, challenging, and appreciating as we educate and are educated. At the same time, may we do so with generosity and a willingness to support each other as an extended community called Stanford. Students and teachers, parents and children, colleagues and friends. And then may we learn to reach out from here to the greater world beyond, kindling a passion for justice and for the enhancement of life itself on all of this planet, Earth. We give thanks that this university was established in the words of its founders, Leland and Jane Stanford, to promote the general welfare by exercising an influence on behalf of humanity and civilization. Where the rolling foothills rise up toward mountains higher, here the wind of freedom blows. Freedom to promote and enjoy the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as affirmed in the university's founding grant. May we all do so with enthusiasm and joy, remembering that those who make the worst use of their time most complain about its shortness.
Amen. And now I'm pleased to introduce a person about whom I imagine each of you feel very good. The Dean of Admission and Financial Aid, Richard Shaw. President Hennessy, trustees, deans, faculty, administrators, and members of the Stanford community, today at our great university's 121st convocation, we celebrate the spectacular class of 2015 and the additionally new transfer class. Women and men of the incoming classes we welcome you. You have arrived at this momentous occasion, and I demand that your voice uh, uh, give us a resounding cheer. My goodness. I find such satisfaction in that. I think of my own memory of receiving my college acceptance I'd called home from a phone booth. You remember those? <laughs> and my mother said there was a letter for me. I asked her to open it. And people may have thought Clark Kent had emerged from the phone booth as Superman. <laughs> there was that much jubilation in my response. Times have changed, and technology has transformed what used to be a long walk to the mailbox into a click of a mouse. Nevertheless, the impact is the same. There is such joy in news that introduces the next stage of your life. Convocation is my favorite event at Stanford because it is a beginning that all of you have long anticipated. Each of you in your unique way brings something exceptional to Stanford. To those of us who read your applications, your potential and promise are breathtaking. Today, there are 1,709 freshmen and 47 transfer students entering into the academic community at Stanford. Collectively, you represent 1,134 secondary schools in 50 states and 52 countries. 21 of you are from community colleges, and nine of you are veterans of the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. More than 8% of you are international students. 48% are women. 52% men. And 16% of you will be the first in your family to attend college. And nearly 50% of you are receiving financial support from Stanford for your undergraduate education. The admissions staff and I spend uh, time beyond measure selecting this beautiful class. We search for young scholars willing to step outside boundaries to pursue their intellectual interests. We are further moved by qualities of compassion and openness and commitment to those around you. We search for leadership beyond titles. Most importantly, you told us in your own words of your passion and intention to contribute in significant ways. We see your academic motivation and your personal experiences reflecting a world of possibilities as your lives unfold at Stanford and beyond. I am so lucky to observe in each class the raw beginnings of extraordinary potential. At this point, some of you may be asking yourself, is he really talking about me? Some of you might secretly be wondering if you were the one mistake in the admissions office made this year. Let me be emphatic. We have not made any mistakes in selecting this superlative class. A good and wise friend sees more in you than you see in yourself. This is what we do. This is our profession, to identify in you the intellectual strength and leadership potential uh, to impact the world. We have chosen you, and we have not made a single mistake.
At the conclusion of this orientation week, you will have fully departed from the familiarity of home and high school and embraced a new independence. Soon you will say goodbye to family members. In quiet moments, you will realize the awesome responsibility of deciding next steps for yourself. While at Stanford, take those next steps with an open heart and an open mind. Engage in discovery and know that no truth is so absolute it cannot be challenged. Seek out those who may seem different from you. This is your time of exploration. Set aside your phone and social media often and engage in meaningful personal conversation. My best memories of college are held in the richness of sustained confirmation or conversation among my classmates, faculty, and friends. I want you to look around, breathe deeply, and savor this moment. Appreciate the beauty of this quadrangle. Soak up, I know you are, the California sunshine. <laughs> and take in your new classmates. They are your companions for the journey that awaits you. Many will become your friends for life. Students of the class of 2015, I now officially deliver you to Stanford's three undergraduate schools of Earth Sciences, Engineering, and Humanities and Sciences. And I'm pleased to introduce you to the Freeman Thornton Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education and Professor of the Humanities Harry J. Elam, Jr. Thank you, Dean Shaw, for your remarks and for bringing to Stanford this amazing class. As Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, on behalf of the Stanford faculty and staff, I accept and welcome transfer students joining the classes of 2013 and 14 and the freshman class of 2015 to Stanford University. <laughs> Incoming students, I can feel your excitement. For you and for all of us, today marks an important moment of transition. Before this day, you could only tell people you were been accepted at Stanford. But now this day has finally come and you are officially a Stanford student, part of a community devoted to contemplation as well as action, a collection of fellow travelers knee deep in deep thinking. We know that you have been waiting expectantly for this day and at times it may have seemed like an eternity. We want you to know that Stanford has been preparing for you with enormous anticipation just for you. You may have come to Stanford with certain anxieties as well as great expectations, but let me allay one fear you might have. You are here because you're supposed to be here. This is a match made with much thought and effort on our side and no doubt on yours, more involved than Match.com, eHarmony, or other matchmaking system out there. We chose you, yes, but you selected us as well. With your matriculation comes what we hope will be a lifelong bond. For you are now joined to us and us to you on a remarkable journey. You have come to Stanford to earn a college degree, but Stanford will afford you much, much more. In the immediate days ahead, you can expect that Stanford's world-class faculty members devoted to undergraduate education and research will introduce you to new and different ways of articulating a problem and of problem solving, will engage you in philosophical principles and artistic paradigms, will provide you with insightful methodologies of confronting the meanings of life and approaching the world. But what you may not yet know is that they are also optimistically anticipating the ways that you will challenge them and provoke new thinking. The questions you will ask, the vitality and energy that you will bring to the classroom will energize our own research and make us better teachers and scholars. This is a school that cultivates and savors new ways of thinking and invests in new models for education. 
Located at the heart of Silicon Valley, a place where invention and innovation regularly emerge from people under 30, we don't buy into the hierarchies of the old and wise simply imparting knowledge to acolytes. Learning and the process of knowledge production are collaborative en enterprises and Stanford values and takes very seriously the input of every participant in the project, no matter the size of the assignment or whether they are freshmen or graduate students. And that is why, virtually from the first days of your classes, you will be able to engage in cutting edge research and share in this process of constructing new knowledge. Here at Stanford, we create our own intellectual secret sauce combining tradition and reinvention. At Stanford, profound learning goes on outside of the classroom as well as inside, on the fields of play and on field trips, in dance studios and rehearsal halls, in dorms and on community-based research projects. At Stanford, diversity is not a catchword, not just a cliche, but a fundamental educational practice, for we realize that difference is critical to excellence. At Stanford, that pioneering spirit and entrepreneurial energy that founded the university some 120 years ago still characterize it today. Stanford is a place continually seething with intellectual innovation. It is a place where if you believe it, you can make it happen. This is no gimmick. It is actually true. In this unique place, academic dreams become reality. And so now, this is your moment. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Relish it. Make it your own. And do not be afraid to let it remake you as well. For rest assured, Stanford will change you. Over the course of your time here and beyond, your relationship with Stanford will constantly be reborn, renewed, redefined. You will be presented with marvelous opportunities and you will face significant intellectual challenges, some I might add, of your own exhilarating design. And you will also change Stanford. Undoubtedly, some of you will push even further the frontiers of science and engineering, athletics and the arts. Some will make important contributions that may not be immediately recognized. But all of you will, by your very presence here, make Stanford a richer institution. And that is why we are so very glad that you have accepted our offer and thrilled that you are here. Parents, family members, friends, advocates, I know that for many of you this day is bittersweet. A loved one is leaving home. I understand this sentiment perhaps now more than ever. My one daughter is a high school senior not yet off to college, but already I'm tearing up as I look across the breakfast table at her. I know this day will come soon, so I feel your pain. Please know that your children will come back, changed and perhaps all the more aware of your contributions. Please also know that from this day forward, you too are us, part of the Stanford family. In the school's founding grant, the Stanford's laid out what they wanted from this institution in ways that are simple yet profound. They ask that Stanford educate cultured and useful citizen. Cultured in the 19th century did not mean moneyed or elegant manners. It meant an appreciation not just of the finer things, but a finer service. The Stanford saw learning put in direct relationship with meaningful practice and towards a greater social good. It was, and indeed remains, a noble goal. And so, with buoyant anticipation, and great pride, let us all embark together on this most profound adventure. Welcome to Stanford. It is now my pleasure to introduce the student speaker, Michael Tubbs of the class of 2012. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Provost Elam, for the kind introduction, and good afternoon, President Hennessy, Provost Echemendi, faculty, trustees, and most importantly, our guest of honors, the family and the students of the newest members of the Cardinal family. I have never been to a freshman convocation. Three years ago, I purposefully 
had my family leave our home in Stockton, California, only an hour and a half away late, so that I would miss all the Welcome to Stanford festivities. Don't get me wrong, I was excited for college. This excitement, however, was tempered by a sense of fear and foreboding as I was worried as to whether there was a place for someone like me at Stanford University. Before I graduated from high school, teachers were already telling me in all the ways I would fail at Stanford. And the long summer gave me way too much time to think about every single way in which I was not Stanford. I was not Stanford because I was born to a teenage mother and an incarcerated father. I was not Stanford because I went to a large failing urban public high school. I was not Stanford because I didn't get a perfect 2400 on my SAT. I was not Stanford because I came from a city in a community that most would consider the hood. In short, I missed my freshman convocation. I missed taking pictures on move-in day. I missed all the welcome to Stanford festivities because I was certain that Michael Tubbs would not belong at Stanford University. This feeling of not belonging and questioning my place at this university continued throughout new student orientation and until the very first day of class. As I walked through the quad on a beautiful California afternoon, an afternoon quite like this one, and past the Memorial Church, I began to think about the brilliance of my peers and the faculty that was sure to surround me in the classroom and the feelings of inferiority and insecurity only intensified. Before I walked in the classroom, however, I was met with another thought. I was reminded of the biblical story I had been taught growing up, that as Joshua prepared to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, that God had told him, everywhere your feet tread, I have given to you. And I took solace in that thought, that every word that I walked on this campus was mine, that had been given to me to use, to grow, to utilize, by virtue of my admission into Stanford. I internalized that sense of belonging and those feelings of inferiority were replaced with an appetite to use and utilize all of Stanford's resources. It was this thought, this belief that everywhere I walked on this campus was mine, that explains why I stand before you today, a Stanford senior who has made it his mission to use and utilize all of Stanford's resources. From opportunities such as the Being Overseas program in Cape Town, to faculty like Jim Steyer, Gary Segura, and H. Samuel Lean, to administrators like Dean Julie, Jan Barker Alexander, and Sally Dixon, to community centers, and even to fellow students. It was the same thought, this belief that everywhere on this campus was mine, that led me to apply to the Stanford and Washington program. Additionally, it was the same belief that drove me to strike up a conversation with senior advisor to the president, Valerie Jarrett, after she spoke on campus about the importance of public service. The very same freshman who was afraid to even attend convocation, a year later had the courage, by the virtue of his great experiences at Stanford, to strike up a conversation with this prominent Stanford alum, a conversation that ended with an internship in the White House. So as I stand before you today, I almost laugh at the fact that I was certain that there was no place for someone like me at Stanford University. My three years have shown, taught me one thing, that there is no typical Stanford, that part of the greatness of this university lies in the fact that it is urban and rural, that it is rich, poor, and middle class, that it is made of wonderful incoming freshmen, but also wonderful transfer students. My story is not singular but is one in the course of stories here, of students here that echo this central truth, that everywhere your feet walk on this campus, to the ditch, to your dorm, to the library, to the classroom, or to your student group meetings, has been given to you to do what you will with it. Everywhere you walk on this campus is yours. Own it, because you belong here. This institution needs you, your knowledge, your skills, your passions. The opportunities and resources the university provides are for no one else but you. Please use them. The challenges of this next generation, problems like poverty, climate change, the cradle of prison pipeline and education, beckon you, incoming freshmen and transfer students, beckon you to answer them with the wonderful resources that Stanford provides. So know this, 
Feelings of inferiority, of not belonging, of not fitting in, those are normal, but they are also false. This is your university. Everywhere your feet walk has been given to you. How will you use them? What will your legacy be? Although I missed my freshman convocation, I am honored and excited to have, to have had a part in yours. Welcome home. And now I have the great privilege of introducing the president of this great university to you all, President John Hennessy. Thank you, Michael, for that exhilarating and wonderful speech. Parents, transfer students, and members of the class of 2015, good afternoon and welcome to Stanford University. This is the 12th year I have had the opportunity to celebrate this event with an incoming class. And as Dean Shaw told me, this is the best class yet. <laughs> now the seniors may contend this, but I know that this class will prove me right. Dean Shaw spoke about the extraordinary talents of this class and why, after an intensive review process, we selected each of you to be a Stanford undergraduate. In thinking about the start of a new school year, I have often turned to biographies that I've read over the past year for inspiration. This year, I managed to finish two works on Benjamin Franklin, an individual whose broad range of accomplishments as author entrepreneur, statesman, scientist, inventor, diplomat, and political theorist has always amazed me. In addition to H.W. Brand's biography of Benjamin Franklin entitled The First American, which I read nearly 10 years ago, this past year I completed Walter Isaacson's Benjamin Franklin, An American Life, as well as Franklin's own autobiography. Now, if you're interested in this most diversely accomplished of the Founding Fathers, I would recommend either of the two biographies. You see, Franklin was a big proponent of self-improvement, but not always the most insightful when criticizing his own life and accomplishments. Now, as I read these books and contemplated the arrival of a new class of Stanford undergraduates, I found my way myself thinking of the many ways in which Benjamin Franklin exhibited the same characteristics that we look for in selecting Stanford students. It is true that Franklin would have had a few problems with our admissions process. His SAT scores were missing since the SAT was invented 200 years after he was a teenager. More importantly, his high school record was, well, it was non-existent because he quit school at the age of 12 to become a printer's apprentice. But Franklin not only had a keen sense of mind, he was a citizen of the world. And he had two of the most important characteristics we value at the university, intellectual curiosity and passion for learning. Indeed, Franklin's entire life was an intellectual journey, just as we hope the next few years of your lives will be. I trust that as you prepared for this day, you also took some time to contemplate what you are searching for in your undergraduate education. Like Franklin, you live in a time of great change. New discoveries in science are revolutionizing the way we treat human disease, as well as challenging us with deep and complex ethical questions. The changes we have wrought in our environment, from climate change to the reduction and extinction of various flora and fauna, force us to question how we will build a world that will be sustainable for future generations. Events around the world remind us that we share a very small planet among peoples with different beliefs, cultures, and experiences. The goal of educating young people on their journey toward becoming thoughtful and active participants in our society was on the minds of Leland and Jane Stanford, 
when they founded this university. The Stanfords boldly stated their goal of producing, producing cultured and useful citizens. And we still strive for that more than a century later. Today, you join a community of scholars organized to pursue truth, knowledge, and understanding. In Franklin's day, such scholarly communities were rare. So when he was 17, he organized a group of colleagues into what he then called the Junto, a club of inquirers into matters moral, political, and scientific. Potential members were asked four questions to see if they were ready to join his club. Although 280 years have passed since those questions were written, I might ask the same four questions today. First, do you have any disrespect for any current members? Second, do you love mankind in general, regardless of religion or profession? Third, should anyone be harmed in his person, property, or reputation merely on account of her opinions or way of worship? And fourth, do you love and pursue truth for the sake of truth? And will you share the knowledge you discover impartially? Your acceptance letter was an invitation to join a community of scholars founded on principles virtually identical to those of Franklin's Junto. Those principles were established by the university's founders and early leaders, by Jane and Leland Stanford, who in the aftermath of the tragic death of their only son at the age of 15, established this university to benefit other people's children. By Stanford's first president, David Starr Jordan, who chose the motto, the wind of freedom blows, to remind us of the importance of free and open inquiry and by the first faculty and students of the university, who in 1896 created the fundamental standard, which emphasizes personal integrity and respect for each and every member of the scholarly community. It is the standard under which we still operate more than 120 years later. Now that you've accepted the invitation to join this university and to live by these principles, the question I hope you are all asking is how should I make the most of my time here? I can offer a few suggestions based on my 24, 34 years as a faculty member. My first suggestion is to get to know the faculty who have chosen to pursue the academic life because of their passion for learning and their desire to share their knowledge with others. We know that getting to know a faculty member personally is one of the most important components of the Stanford experience. And we have invested heavily over the past 15 years to create many more such opportunities. The hallmark of our, of our innovations has been freshman and sophomore seminars, which are all taught by Stanford faculty, and each of which enrolls no more than 16 students. This year, there will be over 100 freshman seminars on topics including biotechnology, renewable energy, globalization, slavery in ancient Rome, Mark Twain, the Middle East, French intellectual culture, social protest, aging, and Latin American politics. These seminars are a wonderful opportunity to get to know a faculty member and a new subject. Get to know the faculty outside of the classroom as well. While I love giving an exciting lecture to a packed classroom, my greatest enjoyment comes when a student visits my office to talk about my research, to ask a question about class, to seek career advice, or to talk about a topic that she's interested in. We have an extraordinary faculty. Get to know them and discover why they are passionate about their scholarly pursuits. Just as Franklin appreciated the opportunity to engage with and learn from his peers throughout his life, I encourage you to take advantage of the wonderful diversity of experiences and backgrounds of your fellow students. Over the next few years, you will get to know students whose backgrounds, cultures, or beliefs are different from yours. You may find that your values and your prejudices are challenged. I hope that you will discover a new understanding and appreciation for the pluralistic society in which we live and find constructive ways to contribute to this world. 
The opportunity to learn from your fellow students is an important part of a Stanford education. You have chosen to attend a university that is not only a great educational institution, it is also a great research institution. And I encourage you to take advantage of that. Take courses and attend seminars that explore the frontiers of field where new knowledge and understanding are being created. For me, participating in undergraduate research led me from my major in electrical engineering to my graduate major in computer science. And it ignited a passion for being on the leading edge of discovery that sustained me through my PhD and continues to excite me after more than 30 years. Being on the forefront of discovery and taking part in the creation of new knowledge is an immensely rewarding and life-altering experience. Experiment and take intellectual risks. Challenge yourself with courses and disciplines that are new to you. And should you occasionally not succeed, do not become disillusioned. Just be sure to learn from your mistakes. Everyone knows of Franklin's famous experiments with lightning, but he had done many experiments with electricity before the famous kite experiment. His most memorable early experiment was trying to cook a turkey using the electricity from a homemade battery. Unfortunately, during this process, he inadvertently made contact with the electrodes and received a shock that knocked him unconscious. As he said in a letter to a friend written at the time, I meant to kill a turkey, but instead I nearly killed a goose. <laughs> now when his experiments with lightning began, he was chastened by his earlier encounter with electricity and took measures that probably prevented a much more dangerous encounter. So by all means, experiment, but be safe. And do not hesitate to ask for a little guidance and advice along the way. As you begin your time at Stanford and plan your years here, I would urge you to remember that your undergraduate education is the foundation for your entire life. It is a once in a lifetime journey. It is much more than your ticket to your first job. It is an opportunity to develop the skills and passion for being a lifelong learner in areas related and outside of your future career. Now that you have arrived at Stanford, our request is simple. We ask that you become an enthusiastic member of this academic community. We ask you to take advantage of the opportunity. To the parents in the audience, I assure you that Stanford will provide a variety of possibilities for growing and learning during the next few years. But it is your children as individuals who will choose what excites them, what generates intellectual passion, and what engages their very able minds. I hope that you will support that choice. Benjamin Franklin's father, Josiah, was a candle maker, and he hoped that young Ben might follow in his footsteps. But Ben was not interested in making candles. In fact, he contemplated a career at sea, a profession often considered by young, unhappy boys in seaside communities. In the end, Ben was apprenticed to his brother James, a printer. There, he discovered the love of reading and the pursuit of knowledge that changed his life, our country, forever. He also used what he learned to become an entrepreneur eventually setting up his own printing company after he left his brother's employment. His writing skills, which would prove so valuable in his roles as legislature, legislator and diplomat, also had their beginnings in that early apprenticeship. During your son's and daughter's time at Stanford, we will do our best to create opportunities for them to learn and discover. But it will be each student's task to look for those opportunities and to pursue them. I'd like to conclude with an apocryphal story about Franklin, which like so many of his little tales and stories, has valuable lessons for us today. This story claims that Franklin was conversing with some friends at a local Philadelphia tavern shortly after the publication of the Declaration of Independence. 
One young man had heard him discussing the Declaration and came up shouting at Franklin, saying, oh, them words, they don't mean nothing at all. Where's all the happiness that the document says is guaranteed to us? Franklin replied sympathetically. My friend, he said, the Declaration of Independence only guarantees the American people the right to pursue happiness. You have to catch it yourself. So it is with your time here at Stanford. You will have many opportunities here, but it is incumbent on each of our students to catch them. Remember Michael's exhortation. This is your university. I welcome all of our new students and their parents to the Stanford family. Students, I hope your time here transforms your lives just as it has transformed the lives of so many alumni. And finally, I hope your time here will help to provide a foundation on which you will make your contributions to a better world for yourselves and the generations that will follow. Welcome to the farm and welcome to Stanford University. Please rise for the Stanford alma mater, Hail Stanford Hail. We will sing it twice, once on our own and once with you. So we will ask you to join you on the second time. The words are printed in your program. Where the rolling foothills rise up toward mountains higher, where at eve the coast range lies in the sunset fire, flashing deep and paling. Here we raise our voices, hailing thee, our alma mater. From the foothills to the bay, it shall ring as we sing, it shall ring and float away, hail Stanford, hail, hail Stanford, hail. Now please join us as we sing it again. Where the rolling foothills rise Up toward mountains higher Where at eve the coast range lies In the sunset fire Flashing deep and paling, here we raise our voices, hailing thee, our alma mater. From the foothills to the bay, it shall ring as we remain standing for the benediction. Before we leave this gathering, take a moment 
to breathe it all in. The heat and our fans. The sun and sandstone arches. The sky blue with possibility. The celebration. The classmates who in time will become soulmates. The families bursting with pride the anticipation and the hope, the attainment and the challenge, our newest students overflowing with promise. Source of all creation, on this day of beginnings and goodbyes, on this day of welcome and appreciation, shower us with wisdom and understanding, love, and purpose, that this new class of Stanford University and those who love, teach, and embrace them will learn and live with kindness, study and share with compassion, discover and create with joy, so that they will harness their talents to repair the world through knowledge, understanding, and justice. Adonai Yishmur Tzeitecha Uvoecha Me'ata V'yad Olam. May the source of blessing guide you as you go forth and as you return, now and forever. Amen. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.